Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So long time ago, I made a rocket trace loop animation, which turns to be today's topic. This animation originated from a question people asking me on social media. After answering the question, I integrated knowledge into this animation. There are generally two kinds of approach which can be possible. One is to use tracer and the other is not to use tracer. There are several things I have to mention that the tracer system in animation node may not be very efficient in my opinion. Also, if you use tracer, you are only tracing the path of objects and have few other ways to customize the whole animation, especially the rotation after forming the path already. To fulfill the request of rotation, I think it will be better to use the second approach. The customizability of this method can be seen from the demonstration that I have uploaded. I hope that you have watched that so that you know what kind of things you can potentially do with this method. There are also other derivatives that can originate from this tutorial, so likely I will refer the animation of a similar idea to this tutorial. By the way, the setup isn't really hard, so let's just start. So firstly, let's briefly talk about the principle of this animation. If I have a circular object and I have a spline, I'm going to replicate the circular objects over this spline. And of course, they should have a good orientation to the spline. Another thing I want is I want to set the orientation of these circles as well. So some of the circles should rotate only a little bit, and the other circles should rotate a larger number. So as they are creating an offset of vertex, if I'm connecting these vertices, then it will form a helical formation. So this method can essentially also be used to do a DNA double helix and so on and so forth. So before we go to the node tree, let's just create a curve. I'm going to delete original vertices, hit T, and use the draw tool to draw whatever things that uh, seems applicable to you. In this case, I'm going to just draw an infinity. So the next thing that we are going to do is to find the location on this spline so that I know where my circles should be replicated onto. And to do that, I'm going to hit the control A so that I have a search option. And I'm going to type the evaded spline node. I'm going to select our bezel curve and set the type into evaded range. And by taking a look at the 3D viewer, we can see there are essentially 50 points being generated on these splines. I can take down the 220. And the next thing is I would like to replicate our objects or meshes onto this spline, but I don't want to generate actual meshes at this point. So to do that, I'm simply use things like markers or other things, and I'm going to use a distribute matrices. I'm turning off the X and Y, turn everything to one. So now I'm generating a single matrix or vector. You can equalize the matrix as an object. So it functions as a very good replacement as an actual mesh. And here, I'm going to use replicate matrix. And it's easy to connect the matrix into matrices. The thing that you find, however, is obviously you need another matrix input for the transformation. So we need to simply compose the matrix. with the information we get from this evaluated spline. So it's easy to put the location into translation, but the orientation is not good, however. That's where we can use the tangent and the normals. The issue, however, is the tangent basically tells the location that you should look at. For example, I ask you look, to look at upwards, but in terms of rotations, it means your head needs to turn 90 degrees. So I'm going to simply use a ro direction to rotation. And I'm going to set the tangent to direction and the ULA to rotation. So now you can see the blue axis always look at the tangents of the splines, but the green and the red axis still looks at the weird location at some point. In that case, you just put the normals into guide, then everything will be fixed. So at this part, uh, this is basically done. The issue is how can you actually get them to rotate and how can you actually get the circles over this spline? Just to give you some ideas about the rotations in general. So if I use the offset matrices and set the type into rotation, then I can rotate everything as a whole. But just be aware, they will rotate at the same amount because we are only having one matrix here to rotate with. 
and then we are replicating metrics afterwards. But I want different metrics rotated differently. So here is the thing that we are going to do is instead of using this replicate metrics node, I'm going to replicate everything at the beginning. So by setting this Z division, like into 20, to synchronize the, the evaluate splines and distribute the matrices, I'm simply going to use an integral input and set the type into 20. One put into amount, another in, put into Z division. I'm going to put height into zero so that I'm actually replicating the metrics in the world origin. And I'm asking these metrics to rotate different degree. To do that, so you either generate a loop or not to generate a loop. So to make things easier, let's just uh, take a float range. I'm going to set a stop, put the amounts into amounts, and I'm going to combine URL. You can try to use degree or not use degree just uh, to know the conversion between the degree and uh, a radius. It's basically it. So now if we take a look with you can see the object has been rotated. So you can choose the degree or actually radius to rotate. If you want to repeat rotate everything fully, then you need to rotate 2 pi. This is basically the idea. So now here we are having 20 metrics or 20 objects as you can think. And we also have 20 points on these spines. I'm going to transform I'm going to transform all these points onto these splines. So I'm going to use transform matrix and put them all together. And here you can see the transform matrix does not actually work. The reason is the transformation only accepts the one input but uh, we have multiple metrics input. So to solve this problem, we're going to generate a loop. So I'm going to select this offset matrix and hit W and it goes to the right. So I'm adding a loop. And in new iterator, I'm going to hit this plus and type a matrix list. Uh, I've made a tutorial explaining the meaning of this loop. So I'm not going to go too much detail at this moment. But you can take a look at the right upper corner and so on. By hitting this plus, I'm adding a generate output. So I'm going to output this matrix. And at this output, you can see we have our objects being generated. So we can essentially hide this entire node tree. So after this moment, it's basically done. The next thing is how can I actually get my circles onto everything? So let's firstly generate a circles. Um, let's make a distributed matrices and set, set the type into circles. So we can take a look with what we actually generated. So this is a circle with 10 vertices. You can take that down to three or other things. I'm going to turn down the radius. And then I'm going to replicate this entire circle onto the location that we have generated. So now here we're going to replicate the matrix again. So circle needs to be replicated, so it goes to matrices. The transformation is what we have been generated earlier. So now we get our circles being done. Okay. And you can see they actually have rotation. Uh, it might not be clear at this moment, but we will make it clear later. The next thing that I'm going to do is to generate splines from the points that we just have created. And just to give you kind of idea to do that, I'm going to take a matrix from points. Uh, if I put a matrix into the points, it will automatically generate a decompose matrix nodes to break down every all the information and by using the curve objects output node then we can generate a target splice 
And the knight looks kind of very jaggy, we can smooth it out with smooth bed is fine. So knight looks much better. However, this is not what I want. What I want is to generate three splines instead of one. So now what it happens is it connects all the points together. But to generate the three splines, I need to connect every third point. And for each splines, they should have a different starting point. So that every third of points for them will be different. And to do that, uh, let's firstly generate an object instance node. And I can just use the target that I just created. Copy the full object and then make a deep copy. So that I have essentially three spines being generated eventually. And the, the amount of instances will be synchronized with the vertex amount of circles. So I'm going to take the integral input. And take that to three. Okay. And then I'm going to set a loop. So loop through object. And I'm and in the parameter I'm going to use a vector list. And I put the translation into the vector list. The reason I do that is because for each of the objects, they should have different lists of points used to generate a spline. So I'm going to connect the points into the hard target. And I'm going to connect this vector list into points. So now, so if I had a target, you can see um, these three spines are still doing the same thing that connects all the points because we haven't sorted all the points. So next thing is to sort all these points. So I'm going to use the index max of all and the evaluate for. So by using these two nodes, so let's change the type to location and use a list. And I'm going to put this vector list into location. So now by doing so, I'm evaluating the every seconds of points within this list. The step amount is eventually the iteration. The iteration means how many times this loop will be run. And how many times of this loop will be run eventually comes to be how many splines I'm going to generate and how many splines I'm generated essentially is the amount of vertices of the circle we have and so on and so forth. And then the offset will be the index. The index will change its value for each loop. So in this particular case, it's a very nice parameter for the offsets so that in the first loop we are selecting the first index and the second loop we are selecting the second index and so on and so forth. And then I'm going to use a mask list to define which points will be used to generate the splines. So I'm going to put a vector list into list and directly put the strength into mask, list into points. So now we have everything being done. It's basically it. Um, so we have three spines connecting every third of vertices and so on and so forth. And by changing the step, you can eventually decide the rotations of that. There are some offsets uh, in the connection, but you can simply, uh, there are many different ways to fix these problems. I, I think I'm not going to too much detail. To just to give you some idea about how to animate them, uh, so you can use the trim spline. This trim spline node can essentially tell us how to trim the splines and so on. Uh, and also to make different thickness, uh, in the, this radius, you can put a float range. I'm going to take the type to stop, list into amount, and put the list into radius, and turn down the stop so that you can have a gradation of thickness and so on. Um, other things is like, uh, if you would like to add materials in this tangent, let's add a material, 
let's make it uh, emit white light and if you go to the render it does not update everything you just need to hit the copy for object again so update all the information these are essentially the things um, also um, here's one thing if you need a rocket so let's just uh, generate a rocket very quick so I'm going to take the yeah basically that's it and in you can either use the constraint follow path but uh, I recommend to use the evaluate spline and by selecting these splines we can use uh, objects metrics output basically you just need to do the same thing as we have done earlier so set the objects into the cylinders Euler rotation into the rotations location into translations tangent directions and so on so now by changing these parameters we are moving this stuff on these lines. The reason I recommend this method is because uh, for constraints you really just uh, use a fixed point. Uh, but it, by using this method I think it's kind of easier to get offset compared to the train path. That's essentially what I found. And in terms of animating, so like uh, while the end is 0 0.07 you can make it 0 0.08 so our rocket is always a little bit ahead of the splines and so on you can do things like that um, I have made tutorials like how to animate animation nodes because you cannot keyframe the everything and I also have made tutorials about the fish parade about how you you make an object go along the splines and so on and so forth I think I'm not going to too much detail in that cases uh, and I'm also not going to talk about texturing, which I think is tedious. Uh, the, the real principle is really just talking about how to actually get these headaches. I would like to make trace patterns, DNA, or any other things. There are many different derivatives that you can potentially work with. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll probably see you next time. If you have any questions, then leave in the comment below. See ya. Bye-bye.